the Sisters Festival is to the Miao what Valentine's Day is elsewhere. Girls dress up in their finest, including all their shining silver jewelry. Then they reenact the courting customs that have been observed by the Miao since ancient times. The girls hurry off to the tops of mountains where they collect wild flowers and berries. This vegetation is used to dye the glutinous rice a variety of colors for the festival. The rice, the most emblematic item of the festival, may later be given to the suitor. See? Just like that. After it's picked from the trees, the plants are dried and ground. Then they're boiled in water until the color comes out. It's a process that all the women in the family take part in, and even little girls start learning at a young age. The colors that are all from nature result in rice that is usually dyed blue, pink, yellow, and white, representing the four seasons. The sister's rice is crucial in the courting process because the rice balls are the tools the girls use to respond subtly to a sitter's advances. The multicolored glutinous rice is wrapped into small packets with treasures inside, things like leaves, vegetables, and nuts, each with a particular meaning. Receiving the rice is like receiving blessings from your meow neighbors. But then again, who knows, maybe someone here has a secret crush. Nowadays, the importance of the festival is broader than it used to be. It's no longer just a courting ritual, but a magnificent celebration of Miao culture. Both locals and tourists gather here on these grand occasions to enjoy the sisters' rice. Nearby, the street vendors sell many items, all of different colors and all handmade. You see, sewing and embroidering for the Miao women is believed to be a way of demonstrating respect for one's ancestors. To celebrate Sisters Festival, many people from the villages bring in their best handicrafts and their best products at this market here where they can sell their products. Miao girls begin to learn weaving, embroidery, and cross-stitching from ages as young as six or seven. Here, each piece is unique, and if you're good at bargaining, you can get some really great stuff. It's very flashy, you see. It's colorful, just like the Meow people themselves who enjoy all this color. And for the Sisters Festival, everything happens to be in color as well. Their, their costumes and their, uh, the rice they eat, it's sort of like a mix of all this. And all this is hand embroidered. You see, even here, it's like a little piece of mirror or something. Silver ornaments feature prominently in a Meow outfit. That's because silver is believed to be the symbol of light, which dispels all evil spirits. Meow girls wear the most complicated and finely worked silver headdresses and ornaments. It's long been the custom for them to decorate themselves from head to toe with silver. And a full set can weigh up to 10 kilograms. Since the silver ornaments are a symbol of wealth, a girl's family will start saving up for her right from the moment she's born. The most valuable item she'll ever own is the headdress, which by tradition is decorated with phoenixes. In fact, the patterns on her headdress range from ancient totems to historical legends.
The Sisters Festival brings villagers from many remote areas together, most of them in search of a partner. But for me, it's more like an array of beautiful costumes, colors, and local traditions. It's like a walking cultural show. And what are these guys doing here? You may be used to fishing with a rod, but here they do it with baskets. Eating is also a very social event. Families and friends sit at long tables dressed in their silver gear. The traditional costumes of different branches of the Miao vary, but the craftsmanship is always at the peak of perfection. I feel like I should be wearing sunglasses here because all the girls from the village have put on their best attire, all this silver, to welcome in the men from the other village for the festival. And you see, they brought the best foods, their best clothes, and the best songs. The girls sing about their emotions and daily life. It seems like it's another way of showing off to the men, in addition to their clothing. And you see, people celebrate here by the girls giving the men their alcohol. But since I have nobody to give it to, you want some? Ew! Spring is the season of love, and the boys and girls get to know each other. Knows, this may be the beginning of a beautiful relationship. Well, I guess you're supposed to feed the other person as a sign of your welcoming them. You <laughs> Although this seems like a very simple game, there's actually a lot of hidden things. The girls have to be careful about which food they choose to give to the men, since each has a special meaning. For instance, a hot red pepper means a flat-out refusal. Oh, so these are the items that the girls give to the men. You see, they each represent different things. And in this rice here, she says the leaf represents, let's make friends. You see, the chopsticks are also an interesting way to communicate. If the girl gives him one chopstick, that means no. And giving two means I love you too. Good luck to the newlyweds. Well, maybe there's still a long way to go before they get married, but who knows what the right rice could lead to. The festival is held every year in April and lasts five days. Apart from everything else, it's the perfect opportunity just to enjoy the spring weather. The young people sing, dance, eat and court. 
As for the married women, they're more likely to be busy dolling their daughters up in layer upon layer of silver. Woo! I can't talk and dance at the same time, but you know, you know you are in a meow village when you hear the banging of the drums and the clanking of the silver. The unmarried girls dance slowly in a circle in their ornate silver encrusted costumes. The music is supplied by a big drum in the middle. And with the weight of the costumes on the girls and the effects of the alcohol on the village elders, it's a wonder anyone is left standing after three hours. Yet on and on, round and round they go, shimmering in the sun. It seems to me that you don't always find the best performances in fancy theaters with magnificent acoustics. Here in Guizhou, the most brilliant festival can be seen on the mountain plateau, in remote villages, and even besides the gurgling water. In the distance, the drums are still banging and people are still singing and dancing. But this ends our journey in southeastern Guizhou. I hope this trip has made us better understand the Miao people, the vast mountains they live in, and nature itself. I'm Yin, and see you next time on Travelog.